OK, so I've put those chips in place now. It's very important to make sure you get them in the right place and in the right orientation. The names for the each chip are clearly marked on the board, but underneath where the um, uh, the chip goes. So um, it's quite important to refer back to um, either another board if you have one, or to the schematics and the PCB layout that's on Easy EDA uh, that you can get to through the blog post. Um, so just do an, a, a check to make sure you've got them all in the right way around. Um, so this one, the notch should be at the top, and this is an LVC245. This one is an HC590, and the notch should be at the right hand end, as I look at it. Um, like this, um, and this one's a 595 again, the notch at the right hand end. And then all of these have the notches at the right hand end. These three are LVC245s. This one is an HCT74, an HCT02, and an HC138. So, assuming all that's correct, uh, we can proceed. If you do get a chip in the wrong place, <coughs> um, there are some techniques for removing chips. Uh, if you're like me and you probably think that um, risking damaging the board is more trouble than it's worth, then you can simply snip the pins on the chip. Uh, obviously this makes the chip useless after that and uh, you'd have to throw it away and buy a new one. but this ensures that you won't damage the board particularly and it's then easy to remove the remaining bits of of wire that are still in the board with either a solder sucker or with a solder wick which is this kind of thing um, so it's just a braided copper wire and um, the benefit of the, the way you use this is to put it over a pad so if you just chop off the bit that you've already used, put it over um, a pad on a chip, and then press down and hold it there for a while. And I don't know if you can see that the solder's being sucked up into it, but now you can see that that hole is completely clean. Now it doesn't always work as well as that, and sometimes you have to do a bit of fiddling. And But because the holes on this PCB are pretty big, that's probably your best technique if you if you do have to remove a, um, uh, a chip. We can try the solder sucker approach as well. Um, so if I do that on this pin and I push it down so that there's a good join, you can see that hasn't done a particularly good job. Try again. Sometimes that's because hmm, there's a lot of solder already in the solder sucker. And that obviously didn't just come off the pin that was already in there but actually despite the fact that it deposited a load of solder in place it's actually done a good job and has removed all the solder from that pin as well so those are good techniques um, it's these two pins here that we remove the solder from so we'll put that solder back on it, even when it looks as though you've removed all the solder from a pin, sometimes there's still a tiny bit attached inside the board, so you have to be careful not to to pull too hard. Um, but generally you'll be wanting to, once you've got all the solder off, um, or all the solder you can get off, pushing something underneath the chip, um, and then to, to sort of leverage it off the board, maybe a flat-headed screwdriver would be better than these tweezers, um, but something thin and but strong that you can push under there and then you might have to just touch obviously these pins would already have the solder removed at this point but you would then perhaps have to touch them with the soldering iron just to try and free up the tiny bits of solder that might still be holding them in place um, but the best way is to avoid having to do that and being careful that you put the chips in the right place in the first place Okay, so moving on to the final 
uh, part of the construction. Um, the bits that we still have to put in place are the connector for the Raspberry Pi, which is these two pieces. Um, there is actually a position for another piece here, uh, but that's not actually required and isn't included in the pack. The one this ex this extra piece is used for the reset on the the Raspberry Pi Zero. This one's actually used for a video out, a composite video out, but there's no other connections on this board for that, so there's no point in putting that in place. Um, just as a as a quick note at this point, the fact that we're using the reset um, also means that you have to attach um, extra pins to your Raspberry Pi. Generally, your Raspberry Pi will come with this 40 pin header in place or, or you, you'll generally solder that in place um, but it's also important to solder this these extra two pins uh, into place here which are um, you can just use some of this header strip uh, that I've included we'll use some of this but I think there will be some extra pins left over and so you can use a couple of those you can just break this into pieces so well, I'll show you that later, but um, you could use that for your Raspberry Pi. Okay. Um, the other thing, just to mention at the moment, um, there aren't any Raspberry Pis in the kits that I'm sending out. Um, that's because Raspberry Pis are zeros are quite hard to get hold of. So you'll have to go on to um, one of the sites like Pi Hut or Pi Pi Maroni. Uh, on the internet, and they're just, I think they're just £4.80 or something at the moment, um, so they're very cheap. So I'm just soldering that one in place, and then uh, and then this one. But unfortunately you can only buy one at a time on those websites of the Pi Zeros. You can buy a Pi Zero W as well, I think they're also limited to one at a time. Pi Zero W's work, but they're about twice as expensive. They're almost ten pounds. Crazily enough, um, still incredibly cheap for a computer of that power, but um, but a lot more than four pounds, obviously, or five pounds. So I'm um, just doing the same thing I've done with all the other things, putting the component in place with one pin soldered, and then pushing it in while reheating uh, re, uh, that, that um, pad just to make sure it's fully seated. Okay, so I think I'm doing this in a sensible order, but it probably at this stage doesn't really matter. And I might just put the fan on. I was using that for the ICs and it made a bit of a difference in terms of the amount of flux smoke that I breathe, so hopefully I'll try and speak a bit louder while I do this. Um, so it just makes quite a big difference in terms of the direction the smoke takes when you're soldering a lot of components. And the air does tend to become a bit filled with uh, with the smoke from the flux in the solder if you're not careful, so it's definitely not a good idea to breathe too much of that in. Okay, so just working down here. Now, the next thing on my mind to do is the edge connector, the connector that connects to the bus of the RC2014 retro computer. So that's the connector that goes in all of these holes down here. Um, now that connector is a 90 degree uh, right angle um, connector. You can see it here. So it's two rows um, and they're then the pins are bent at 90 degrees um, and they go. it goes into the board in this sort of fashion. Um, now the thing is that we need to remove some of the pins from that connector because the RC2014 only uses 
it uses an entire row of them on one side, or almost an entire row of 40 pins on one of those rows, but the other row is only partly populated, and so we actually have to remove the pins from that part of the row. And if I show you <coughs> if I just show you another board that's been completed, this actually is an older prototype board, so it's not it's not the same as the as the one we've been building. But um, I think you can see that this set of of, of pins here has been removed and we need to do that on our board as well so um, we'll be removing the pins along here so the easy way to do that I think um, Spencer who, in, who designed the RC2014 uh, suggested this as, as the way to do it as I recall but um, what works quite well is to is to put the connector in place on your board um, so probably this way around and we want to remove <coughs> so we want to remove the ones we just put it in temporarily we want to remove the ones from this end up to about up to here so these so if you put it in place I probably would have been smart to have done this before I put these two chips in place but what I can do is I can move along to here and put it into the board like this so I've just it doesn't go in fully because just here there is a, a lack of a hole so it won't go in all the way but what that allows you to do um, perhaps it's better to do it here, thinking about it. I'm going to do it in this way. What it allows you to do is then pull these pins out while they're being, while <coughs> the the connector is being held in place by these pins that are in these holes. So it's this pin on the top that I want to pull out first, um, and I can just pull it out with tweezers like that. So, and I'm just pushing down with my, my, my finger here so that it's the connector, the plastic part, uh, is being held in place by these other pins that are still in the holes in the board. Um, it doesn't matter where you do this or how you do it, but ultimately you need to get these removed. Tweezers probably aren't quite up to that. <coughs> up to that job so I'm going to use some needle nosed pliers so just give it a firm yank to pull it out and continue on so we'll have a bit of a check in a moment how many we're supposed to be removed but it's at least about 15 I would say so we'll keep going until we've removed something closer to that number. This is not, not doing it quite as well as I should be. Bending the plastic rather. So if you bend, don't want to bend the plastic too much because it's not actually that strong. So maybe this way around might be easier. using this row here. Perhaps that is an easier way to do it. Okay, so I need to Yeah, it's not not as easy on this board as it is on some because some of these boards the holes go all the way to the end, which makes the whole thing a lot easier, frankly. I'm just wondering if there's somewhere else on the board that might fit that bill. Yeah, here. 
so actually using this row of holes here might be might make things easier so I'm just going to put that into there the, the row that we want to keep is now in those holes and then these holes are these pins are overhanging the edge and that might make it easier to just pull them out So this is definitely one of the fiddlier parts of the of the project. As I say, the plastic isn't particularly strong, so it's quite important to not put too much stress onto it. Okay, so let's see how we're doing. We've removed a few, so it looks as though we have about three more to do. These three here, and then we'll be finished. So, I'm just going to try and find another place on the board now to, it might work for these three. Okay, so I've gone back to this section of the board. Just putting a bit of pressure onto it vertically to hold it in place while pulling the, the pins out. Okay, so I've pulled all those pins out now. No need for the fan to be on actually thinking about it. Let's turn that off. Um, so I've pulled all those out now and and now the connector fits properly into the board. Um, and we can now go ahead and solder all those pins in place. So I'll sign off for a moment, do that and then come back.